don't know if you're selling kombucha or not, but I am definitely not buying. But what I am doing is starting this in shop podcast right here, ladies and gentlemen. I am, of course, the Mighty Pong. I'm Crux, and uh, are we've we've got some special guests tonight. We'll we'll bring them in here in just a quick second. But uh, they are the uh, the the head, the chairman of the key board, if you will. Huh? They uh, they run uh, BoardSource.xyz. And uh, we're going to talk keyboards with them. They're going to they're going to they're going to wrinkle up my brain of when it comes to keyboards. My brain is way too smooth. We're going to wrinkle that up here in just a little bit. And with that, let me bring in our guests. Hello, our guests. Hello. <laughs> we have uh, Hello. we have both Cole and Quinn from Board Source. And uh, so now, how long you guys are members of the shop, right? How long have you guys been members? We joined maybe six. Six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, something like that. Um, so early part of June, I think. Very cool. Yep. So what? what yeah, I've oh. already heard great things about you too. So yeah, thank you. We, uh, <laughs> I knew about the shop mm -hmm. um, when it was on. It was downtown, right where I, uh, right where I lived, and I think it's on Eleventh or Seventh, something like that. Anyway, I knew you guys were down there, and I took a tour once, but I never actually took the plunge of joining, really. But I thought it was super cool. Awesome, awesome. So, what what was it that made you finally decide to pull the trigger and come down? Well, I think for me or us and things we work on together, it's uh, we we have fun doing what we do, mm -hmm. but we always are like, okay, what's the purpose? What are we going to do with it? Right. You know. So, in order for us to really feel like we're utilizing a space or doing something the best we can, mm -hmm. there has to be a purpose. So, I think the answer to the question is, I didn't see a need for it then. But, you know, I just thought okay. it was super cool. And when I really saw a need and I thought that I could gain stuff from it and also give back to it, mm -hmm. it just seemed like the right time. Nice. Yep. So what was it that you get the most from out of, with the shop? Like, like in oh, other oh, words, oh. What you, what's the biggest part of the shop that you enjoy? Uh so far we've uh, we've enjoyed meeting the new people there and we've uh, enjoyed being able to play with uh, some of the tools that we haven't had access to in the past uh, like the laser cutter and uh, some of the 3d printing tools there mm -hmm. are have been really interesting and fun for us uh, to start uh, playing with it's also it's just a fun setting to be in yeah you know yeah, I mean you really can research is. things for i don't know the majority of your life and you wouldn't have seen everything in that shop even no. online yeah so i look no. back and it's like an archive almost especially the electronic section i get to see these things i've seen it's just fun yeah you know yeah i completely agree well once once it starts you know once we are finally able to open up a little more it's going to be even more fun because you know yep. that was the the predecessor i guess to this show was kind of started up as a thing you know we were talking about that before the before we started it was kind of uh, you know, a Friday night hangout type of thing. And, you know, we're, mm. we're doing what we can to carry that forward onto Twitch, but, you know, being there in person, I'm looking forward to that, yeah. to the day when we can do that again. So. We'll see. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. I mean, it like would be really great. We were saying the other day, it's like sort of, obviously the mask is important, but I don't really feel like I get to learn the person's face and recognize them and interact with them the same. Yeah. It's different when you knew the person before, but it's like, I, I'm excited for what it is when it reopens again because we haven't even experienced that. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, we'll 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 get there eventually. I think it, it, as yep. long as as long as people are are you know doing what they have to do now, hopefully we'll be able to get to that point where we're able to, you know, <laughs> where we're able to to do that stuff. You know, where we're able to yep. get back to some something resembling normal. So at any rate, one thing that's really normal is keyboards. That was a terrible segue, but we're going to roll with it. I, I'm a big fan of them. I just kind of need a keyboard to do my job. So, so you know, I, I I had always had that a similar relationship to to Crux on that. Uh, in that, yeah, oh, it's a keyboard. Like I think I've had the same one. It's a it's a crappy SciTech or whatever. But I've had that same one for like you know six seven years. Whatever. It's mm -hmm. a keyboard. It gets the job done. But then I started researching for this show. There's a lot of keyboards out there. There's a lot of lot of like high quality keyboards. So so tell us about Board Source. How long ago did you start that? We Cole, when do you think we started it? Um in earnest, I think we started 
uh, was it late December? Yeah, I would say that's when it, I, that is also when I would say it went from purely conceptualizing and I wouldn't say loose planning, but planning to actually work, right. whether it be like in the, you know, just making the designs or starting to code it. So I think December is fair, but it's one of those questions where it's like, when does it change from, a, you know, something conceptual to actually working on it? Right. We might have been thinking about it and planning it for two years. And then we opened, opened June 1. Oh, okay. Right. Wow. Yeah, I just threw the uh, link up in the chat if anybody would like mm -hmm. to take a look at it. And, and so what's the... What's basically the elevator pitch of board source? If I'm, if I'm, you know, some new guy just off the street or even better, the way I always like to, uh, to say things is describe it to me. Like you would tell someone's mother. <laughs> like, yeah, like, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I haven't, I haven't really thought of that yet, so I don't have one rehearsed, Yeah. but I, you know, when we talk about elevator pitches, it's like, I feel it should be kind of planned and all encompassing, but I'll do my best. I think it is a good a great place for anyone who is already in the hobby mm -hmm. or new to the hobby or entry interested in getting into the hobby to find something they like mm -hmm. and the hobby being mechanical keyboards in general, whether you want to purchase a complete kit mm -hmm. or individual components. And I, I, I think another part of that kind of having something for everyone also means price point mm -hmm. and different people's ability, whether they want to pay for assembly service, ability or free time, I should say. Yeah. So we just wanted to make it accessible for anyone, new, existing, you know, deep, deep hobbyist or whatever. So I think that's the elevator pitch is uh, we do that for the mechanical keyboard community. Gotcha. Okay. We, we wanted to create a, a place where you didn't have to already know everything mm -hmm. just to mm -hmm. check out something where... Yeah. Uh, anybody can go in there, doesn't matter your skill level, and you feel confident that, okay, I'm going to get something that I, and I have all the things I need right here. Yeah, right and you there. enjoy it. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. So, um, so it's basically like a, a, a one-stop shop for being able to go from an idea about a keyboard to being able to build your own keyboard, essentially. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay, yep. cool. Um, at least for the solderable kits. That's a great, great description. Okay. Um, you know, that, that's the building part. And then we also have uh, options for assembled boards. Yep. And then some of our group buys in the future will require less kind of hands-on. Definitely. But I know one thing going into this that was important for me is I knew that even if we kind of went in the more assembled direction to help introduce more people who aren't comfortable with soldering, I think it's a great thing to learn, but some people aren't comfortable with it and that's cool yeah we still wanted to offer the other stuff always other stuff being solderable kits because mm -hmm. one thing we didn't know and i think Cole, you can agree going into this is i always looked at it as though we were selling a keyboard to somebody who knew about it and loved it and was really really knowing what they were getting into mm -hmm. they already had a few of these hobbyist level keyboards mm -hmm. but Instead, they're actually fun weekend projects for some people. Yeah. And I didn't look at them that way at first, and they just want to try it. So we don't want to take that away. Um, but yeah, definitely something that makes it easy for people to build always. That's what we do. Nice. So yeah, I guess, and, and in a way, I think you may have answered my next question here. So mm. with any new thing that someone brings to market, there's either something that isn't there, right? So like the guy that made the first bicycle, or there's something that they feel that they can do better, like the guy that made the second bicycle. <laughs> so, like, sure. so what? Which way did you guys think about it? And it sounds to me like it, it was more a more a second bicycle guy thing. Like you were like, yeah, the, go ahead. The, it's a, it's a mixture, is the truth of it. You know, there are some first bicycles yeah. that people still enjoy, and then a lot of them have a second bicycle twist or they're a completely new bicycle. Right. So it's it's a mixture of products. And it's that's what it means to make things easy, access for people, is that some of these things that were more fragmented before are in one place. Mm -hmm. So it's a mixture. Oh, in the yeah. chat, uh, myself248 mm -hmm. says, turns out it's a gateway drug. I, man, I, I'm yep. with you on that. <laughs> no, it really is. It really, it's really is. You, won't, you likely won't just have one. Mm -hmm. It takes a while to find what you really like. So yeah, I mean, you need, you need to have like the gambit. You gotta have the old, you know, IBM Model M keyboard that 
can double as a weapon and and you're yep you're every day you know using the computer and uh keyboard and... yep i have one of those somewhere it it's not that far i i've got one of those really old keyboards that has the old at style connector on it yep yeah mm-hmm. but and you you could oh. rob a liquor store with one of those I'll t- <laughs> just that of course yeah. it comes with no surprise i have yeah, one we... not 10 feet away <laughs> nice yeah nice. we had uh those back when I used to work in the casinos as a PC tech and they were great because they were indestructible. Like, you know, we would put them out at like the casino bars because you know, you could pour like several drinks on them and then all you'd have to do is just rinse the thing out and, and it, it'd be fine. Throw it in the dishwasher on the low heat setting. And hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, so you kind of uh, uh, fired up a business at quite possibly the worst possible time <laughs> so so that's i wanted to ask you guys like how has that been like because you're you're trying to get this thing up and running and then the world shuts down like has that impacted your supplies or you know how has that gone oh go well, for it uh I, you, you hit the nail on the head there we we definitely underestimated uh what uh, what the coronavirus was going to do to our supply chain. Yeah. And it, it was particularly hard for us because one of the things we were trying to solve for the community was we wanted, we wanted everything to be in stock, get it in two days. Uh, everything is done quick and everything was there for you. Right. And so when we started having these massive supply chain disruptions and uh, things were shipping two weeks late. They were being held up in customs. Uh, it, it it did slow us down quite a bit in that way as well. But I think that we've been able to adjust. And uh, overall, it's been, uh, we've gotten good support from our community and the very understanding uh, about this because we're not the only people facing this problem. Everybody else is facing these same problems. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's... I think the oh. one of the most. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go right ahead. I, I think one of the most important words there was just adjust. We had so many conversations along the way, you know, when it was early, and most of the people here were here being America. I'm speaking for everyone here, but I think it's true. At a time, we were all a little bit in denial. Mm. You know, we didn't know it wasn't even real when we first started this on, to us yet. Yeah. So we're like, oh, it's probably not going to hurt us. Probably not really going to affect us this and that. And when you work on something hard and you really get going on it, you don't want to stop it. Mm. And we're like, well, ultimately it doesn't change the business if the timing is poor. And we certainly had to adjust and work harder to purchase, uh, I would say at a minimum hundred or hundreds of unique items Mm -hmm. and have them arrive in time and make sure people aren't waiting longer than they need to. And it made us adjust how and what we launched with additionally. Mm-hmm. So it definitely had an effect, but it was, uh, you know, possible to adjust. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was one of the most interesting things in the, in the very beginning of everything. Uh, everybody was like, oh my God, it's the hoarders. That, and that's why I can't get toilet paper. I've talked about this a couple of times mm-hmm. on the show before, but really what it boiled down to was supply chains. You know, you've got right. one supply chain that's their paper is going to businesses, which are now closed. And then you have another uh, supply chain that's going to the stores for people to buy at home. And that supply chain is now overtaxed mm. and trying to switch right. the two and, from. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, and I mean, it's the whole the whole supply chain was really disrupted here because that was a overtaxed. But then B, that was also hitting feeling its own pressure with uh, manufacturers being shut down and with less drive with less uh, drivers on the road. So just yep. getting things logistically from point A to point B became a lot more difficult. And we felt this disruption uh, stay side, at least all over the place um, with, uh, you know, toilet paper or with uh, um, your Amazon products. I mean, I'm sure everybody, uh, felt that when uh, their Amazon shipments prime was no longer two days. It might be five days. It might be two weeks, mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know? Absolutely. Yeah. I know that uh, there was a whole bunch of different things. Like I had a, 
a, a cart that was ready to go, it, you know, on one day for Amazon, uh, for the, uh, was it prime now? And I was just like, ah, I'll order it next week or whatever. And then the bottom fell out of everything. And then, you know, all of a sudden, like half the stuff in there that I've been ordering consistently every week, can't get it anymore. Like Mountain Dew throwback, couldn't get it for like months. So mm -hmm. it was weird. Oh, in the chat. Yeah. I, and then there's oh. like, if you needed to order something like overseas from China or whatever, then that's mm. even longer. Yeah. So. Yeah. That was no good. Yeah. I ordered. I, I still have things I'm, I'm been waiting on for a while. So. Oof. Ouch. Yeah. I, I was assembling a Euro rack, uh, drum kit and I had to wait forever and a half to get all the, all the parts. I just got the last box today, actually, or yesterday. Uh, in the chat, uh, myself two four eight also says uh, that he was picturing a Model M bicycle made of cast iron. Yeah, so <laughs> from what we were talking about earlier, uh, I mean, it'd be that would be a little, a little lighter than a real Model M, but yeah, <laughs> just a little bit, yeah. Unless it's got the really big wheel in the front, like penny farthings. Anyway, one of the yeah penny penny far yeah. So, okay, so we already talked a little bit about the products itself and and what you guys do. Oh. Uh, in the chat there, uh, you may have noticed if you're actually in the chat, not watching this, if you're watching the stream later, you won't see this. Uh, but if you are in the chat, you may have noticed as an announcement I forgot to make stream elements says we have shirts, you have money, let's trade. We now have a merch store. And, uh, if you, uh, check out that link or if you type exclamation point merch in the chat, uh, that will take you to the merch store where you yourself can get your very own sin shop t-shirt as well as Sinshot podcast gear. So check it out if you'd like. It helps the shop, goes directly to the shop. We would really appreciate it. And you get to put off laundry for one more day. So anyway, that's enough of our products. Let's get back to your products. So you guys order in the parts and you put them together here, all the assemblies done here, right? Yeah, the, the assembly of the products, if people, if people purchase assembly service is done here. Right. Yep. Okay. And then, like I said, a lot of people do choose to assemble it themselves. You know, they consider that part of the fun, sort of. Absolutely. Okay. But now, one thing that's interesting, we've talked about uh, on this show a lot. Uh, we had a guy that used to work at Mackie, uh, Mackie Audio in the 90s and late, mm -hmm. late 90s. And he was there for basically the whole Behringer issue. It was a really cool episode. I think it was uh, last week, week before, something like that. At any rate, um, in that episode, we talked a lot about things being pushed overseas, but the keyboard <laughs> thing, the keyboard uh, uh, hobby, that really never was a thing here as much, right? That was, all, in other words, what I'm saying is, it wasn't like in the 70s, there was American companies cranking out keyboards, or were there? <clears throat> like, do you know the, what the history is of that? Like, um, it, 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 you're right. It's a little bit of a weird uh, scenario. Obviously, there's the the Model M that you guys have spoken about, and that's a, a renowned keyboard. Even in the keyboard community, it's a it's a really great keyboard. Yeah. But you're also correct. Uh, a lot of the really cool things that the keyboard community still really likes are made by Cherry, and mm -hmm. Cherry's a German company, right. and uh, the it, we didn't have like this base in America that could get uh, sent overseas. Kind of, it, it's already been a worldwide hobby, right? Uh, with uh, your maybe your switches are produced in Germany and your keycaps are produced here in uh, America, mm -hmm. but uh, that you can just as easily split swap that, and uh, it's uh, the other way around, and you're getting just electronic parts from China mm -hmm. or. Uh, there's even some makers who get their electronic parts made, their PCBs made here in America. Um, so yeah. it, it does seem to be very much a worldwide community and worldwide manufacturing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty much any keyboard you're going to buy, the parts are going to be sourced from sure. different countries, which is kind of a cool thing. You know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's absolutely is not just American or just German or right. just South Korean. Right. And a lot of those places, what's kind of cool is, um, I, I can't really speak to them like historically or a long time ago, mm -hmm. but recently they each kind of have their own little things they like. Yeah. And that's something super cool to me. Mm -hmm. You know, the, this is big in this country or this is like 
South Korea, for instance, they have just absolutely beautiful high-end custom keyboards, and I even see all of them, mm. which is incredible to me. Like it, it is there is a set a point of separation, yeah. But still, you could get them if you knew where to look, mm. you know. And they're not available here, so cool. it's just it's cool stuff like that. that yeah. And I just love that the countries kind of have their own little interests and signatures is the best word, I guess. Of niches, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Well, and we're going to talk about this in just a little bit, but it reminds me an awful lot of the Eurorack community, but we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that here shortly. Um, but so I did want to ask you, so why did you guys choose Vegas as your home base for the, for the company? Or is it just a matter of, well, hey, I, we live here. <laughs> I, I've lived here my whole life and mm-hmm. Cole has lived here off and on. So it just, just, just where we are. Way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't move here, uh, with the intention of running board source from Vegas or, you know, anything related to board source. We were just here. It was just like, yeah, this is where my yep. stuff is. So here we go. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. In the chat here, uh, myself two, four, eight again says a uh, returning champion says, uh, uh, he wants to know if you guys offer a crappy assembly service for customers who enjoy re- rework. Oh, we, we could <laughs> offer that. Absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they will they will solder it on the back of a motorcycle going down a road with a bunch yes. of potholes just for you. <laughs> I wonder that, that would be a, a hell of a thing. Like how would you how would you intentionally mess it up? I wonder. Hmm. Oh, there's ways. Yeah. There's ways. We, we could sell rework kits if it, if and when the people send back uh, something that we request back. It could be interesting, you know, if people really yeah. like it. We actually we have a few people in our chat that just love troubleshooting and reworking so it is some people love it yeah hmm. yep i mean it's kind of like a puzzle but with hardware yeah exactly <laughs> they, they yep. look at it as a puzzle and you know it is what some people love it some people it just frustrates them uh oh okay. that was that was my own thing all right so uh yeah uh okay I, I, should i get to this now or should i do mid-show break i'm gonna go ahead go ahead now so i'm a complete newbie to the whole 60%, 40% keyboard thing. I have, I had no idea it was even that big of a thing until, uh, you know, until this, until, until I started researching for the show. The biggest thing I think that it, that is hard for me to get around, it, get my head around actually, is the ortholinear layout. So what, what advantages does that give you? Like to have, uh, just for, for people at home, I, I wish I would have gotten pictures together of this, but I did not do that. Um, but if you have a, uh, a, a, a keyboard, you know, if you look down at the keyboard, that's probably in front of you, the keys kind of slant off to where am I somewhere around there? They slant off to the side, right? Ortholinear they're up and yep. down They're in a grid format. So what is the advantage of that? Cole, can you hold up a ortholinear? You have one in front of you or is it disassembled? Oh, I'll tell you what, I, I can um, get your yeah. site up here. Uh, Here, he uh, might have one. It's no big deal if not. It's just, and to to be clear, you find them even weirder than boards that are more heavily staggered or staggered in different ways. So, just that the the regularity of it and the grid makes it kind of weird to you. Yeah. So the 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 big thing that for me is the uh, uh, let's see, let's go here. This is you guys' website. And, yeah, in dark mode. In dark mode, yeah, that's yep. true. Otherwise, it'll light me up like a Christmas tree. Yeah, here we go. This no, guy. Cool. So having the keys all aligned like that—that that just mm. like in, in to my mind, like is it would just be super duper weird to try to type on. What is the advantage of that? It, there, there is an advantage in the layout okay. and an advantage in the size of the keyboard, but. I do want to be clear when I say advantage, mm-hmm. I do mean for some people, every single person's hands and the way they type or what they're willing to adjust to is different. Mm-hmm. So it's not just like the ortholinear is more comfortable for everybody, mm-hmm. but generally speaking, the keys are closer together. Okay. And if you learn to type in that layout, your fingers have to move less to type each key uh, that's the that would kind of be the elevator pitch on ortholinear i see um and then the other various staggered layouts uh-huh. which are by no means regular they have a greater stagger they're offset even more if you go to a different keyboard 
there are people who find that more comfortable because of the way they rest their hands. So let's see, are we talking like the rip? I'm not even going to try. REB. Yeah, the Ro- the Ravung is a good, great example of that. that great one. example of that because that is a interesting layout on a non-split board. And there will be people who try that and think it's just the absolute best, most comfortable thing they have ever typed on. Uh-huh. And then there are other people who say, no, it doesn't work for me. You know, so that's why I'm always, uh, I, I don't like just saying, yeah, you're going to love this keyboard right. because it is different for everyone. But for me, that's what I find more comfortable is this kind of layout. Interesting. Yeah. And you can see it's it's staggered just in a different way the mm-hmm. other orientation you could say compared yeah. to your normal keyboard mm-hmm. um which uh kind of the elevator pitch behind that is your the your shorter fingers have the keys closer to you mm-hmm. than your longer fingers okay um and so and with ortholinear making everything just straight and in a grid then you're you You'd only have to move straight down. You don't have to move down and over oh, that yeah. kind of thing to get to that key you were looking to get to. Right. Um, and so these are just different variants of trying to make it more comfortable, more ergonomic for uh, your particular typing style. And that's why there are so many different what seem like small variations because it might feel far more comfortable to one person than another. Also, what the the um, person in chat said Mm -hmm. about it being a gateway drug. There's an aspect to it where it's just like, oh, that looks cool. Mm -hmm. I want to try to adjust to use that board because I like the look of it. Yeah. You know, there is, there's that aspect as well. Absolutely. Totally true. Huh. That is interesting. You know what? I, I'm the, the, you only have to move your finger forward and back thing that Mm -hmm. makes that, I think you brought it home for me at least. Yep. And that's part of the, benefit of a smaller keyboard Mm -hmm. and when i was first introduced to like the uh, call it deeper hobby aspect yeah to this two keyboards right cole explained it to me pretty well and on those smaller keyboards Mm -hmm. that we call a 40 percent keyboard okay in addition to moving your fingers less you have to think of it as though you're bringing the key you need to your fingers with layers so don't move your hand or your wrist in the same way a thousand times a day or something like that for some people who suffer from those kind of things like RSI. Mm. Instead, just keep your hands in the same position, utilize layers, much yeah. like on a phone keyboard, for instance. Okay. And just map your keys where you need them. You know, bring numbers to your home row so yeah. you move your hands less. These things are a little bit annoying mm-hmm. or difficult to adjust to. But if you really think about it, if you're annoyed for a week and you type at half your speed, mm-hmm. But you pick up time savings and comfort forever. Right. It's worth it. Right. Especially if you're at your computer all day. Interesting. So this is the one that's up on the screen right now. I got the four by twelve mm-hmm. ortho up there. Is that a, is that considered a forty percent or? Yeah, exactly. That's a that is a forty percent keyboard. What's the forty um, percent? Is that, that is less keys or less space? Yeah, uh, Cole, you you always remember this so much better than me. Go for it. Forty percent of a standard one hundred four keyboard. Um, so it has 40% of the keys of a normal keyboard, Ah, which in actuality usually means that you've lost your number row and you've lost everything to the right hand side of your, uh, primary letter cluster. Mm, Okay. And everything else is handled by, by, you know, essentially another shift key or uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's a great, it's a perfect way of looking at it. When you push shift, when you want to get a capital letter. Mm-hmm. Um, and with uh, these smaller keyboards, they utilize layers. And so you push layer up to get a number instead of Q. Or um, you may be missing on some keyboards, you might miss your brackets. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you, they're... They're just right there. The key is labeled as uh, P and O, mm-hmm. but you just push a layer two and you get to brackets instead of P and O. Yep. Wow. Mm. And then I noticed here you've got the three by four macro. I guess that's for the people that are like, no, I really want to have want to keep my ten key. Right. Yeah, exactly. that's partly it. It can be used for that, and a lot of people use them as numpads. 
And then other people just like run in various, say, like keystrokes or key macros, um, you know, Photoshop, video editing, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, okay. And then other people just use them to display artisan keycaps, which is a whole nother rabbit hole. So actually, speaking of keycaps, uh, in the chat, uh, first of all, Dragonflame says uh, these keyboards have some nice designs, number one. Uh, so kudos to you guys. And he also asked a question, are the keycaps PBT? Um, so PBT is a type of plastic. Okay. And uh, you're, you're correct in that, uh, Dragonflame. Some of the keycaps seen in these pictures are made out of PBT. Others are made out of uh, ABS plastic. And it kind of uh, just depends on the particular one in question. What's Why that? would you choose ABS versus PBT? Um, so the one of the major things that changes between the two are the sound of them. Uh, the two plastics actually sound a little bit different as you're typing on them. Um, but then uh, it's uh, most people will not necessarily choose a material. They'll end up just choosing a profile they like. Uh, the In the hobbyist keyboard scene, we have uh, keycaps that are shaped differently. Sometimes they're all flat. Um, sometimes they're kind of like a, uh, like a little bowl shape and, uh, the, you end up just picking which style you like the most, which style you feel more comfortable in. And, uh, that might happen to be ABS or, um, maybe the style you like is PBT and, uh, that's what you, uh, use. Your um, access to manufacture these different profiles, which come with different uh, different features in addition to just the shape dictates the material just what manufacturer is capable of making that type of keycap you know hmm. okay such a such a cool thing oh we're actually uh past the top of the hour so i just wanted to uh real quick uh, uh do a super fast recap here we are uh oh a a big thing for me is the of the oh a big part for me is of the keycaps for aesthetic reasons. It's the color of the keycaps. The there we go. Right. We have a sentence. <laughs> the, a, big, a, big, a big a big part for me is the color of the keycaps for aesthetic reasons. Yeah, I was looking at yep. uh, a couple of, of other sites that had like this build your own keyboard uh, whole thing, you know, done up in Flash where you're like, okay, I want these keys to be this color and these keys to be that color. It's, mm -hmm. it's such a crazy, crazy world with, you know, of, uh, that I've never... Had uh, been exposed to until now, so this is this is all just just freaking awesome. Uh, but I did want to take a quick break here and just uh, just to recap here, we're talking with the guys from BoardSource.xyz. Uh, I threw the link up in the chat uh, earlier, but you know what? I can do that again. I think no, I'll do that again. B o r s t e dot y z BoardSource.xyz. Uh, so, you know, uh, check that out and you can see the, well, the same thing you, that I just had on the, on the screen. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we're talking with Colin Quinn of board source and, uh, we're talking a little bit about the uh, company that they founded, uh, to, uh, manufacture and, and, and give, uh, and supply parts for, uh, homemade bespoke keyboards, if you will. Um, but, uh, also I wanted to let you know a little bit about the shop. We are of course at 1075 American Pacific drive, sweet C in Henderson, Nevada. If you'd like more information on the shop, go to sinshop.org. If you want to find out when we're having more meetings, uh, include or more events, including online ones such as this, uh, you can head over to meetup.com forward slash sin shop. Also, we are going to be having a project, uh, 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 stream this coming Monday. Uh, there's going to be a continued assembly of the, uh, of my drum machine. Uh, do you, do we have a, we didn't, we didn't talk about this in advance. So do you have a project coming? Yeah. I mean, I have, I got the caps in for the, uh, synthesizer. So if I don't get them in before then I'll, I'll do that on the stream. And I also in relate in relation to this podcast is I've been wanting to build a, uh, custom like keyboard but for like the uh f13 through f24 uh, keys so Ooh. see now cool. I, i'm gonna end up with 15 keyboards on my desk now 
<laughs> Welcome to the club. Ah, dang it. <laughs> All right. Well, so uh, I can't deny that that's what's going to happen. He's probably right. But yeah, at any rate, I do want to uh, encourage you guys if you do like what you see, uh, please do follow us. We appreciate subs. And also, we do have a new merch store. As you saw earlier, if you type exclamation point merch in the chat, uh, it can, it'll can it show you exactly where to go and or how to get there. And uh, do, 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 do. there it is, just like that. Um, so, yeah, uh, is that everything? Oh, and also, after uh, the bottom of the hour, we are going to have the post game. Uh, you guys are, are able to stick around for the, la- for yeah, the second we'll hour? Yeah, we'll be here for a bit at least, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, we're going to have the post game where the party is going to continue. This part right here will be on YouTube, but that part will not. So everybody stay right where you're at and check it out. And also, oh, oh fantastic. I3 Detroit says hello. Oh, yeah. They're uh, good friends of the show. So Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, everyone from I3. Hello. Outstanding. Well, hello. It's, it's great to have you guys. Fantastic. All right. So getting back to this. Oh, also, uh, myself says years back, uh, myself 248. Says years back, I owned a sub notebook with the keys 16 millimeters apart, not the standard 19 millimeter spacing. As someone with big hands, I expected to hate it. Turns out after a week or two, I loved it. Does anyone do closer space keyboards these days? Well, you're in the right place for that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. So you, you're very correct. The standard key spacing is 19 millimeters. And there are actually a few people playing with. Uh, much closer key spacing and uh, getting them even closer, usually for the point of uh, decreasing the overall footprint of the keyboard. Mm -hmm. But uh, it it does happen in the community. Uh, The ability to get keycaps comes down to your ability to create keycaps when you want to go extra small, like 15 millimeters, but uh, it can be done. Yeah, and low pro boards with low pro chalk spacing are also yep. closer. You know, they have a reduced space or spacing, um, and that's something we're going to do. We're going to have an option for it, but it does come down to keycaps, and it's kind of part of what what we were saying about wanting to make sure people are happy with what they get. Mm-hmm. It's hard to get keycaps that work work well for that. Um, so, I, I would imagine you'd have to have the like instead of having the edges at a at a slant, you'd have to have them almost straight up to get that close to each other. Is that part of the limiter? Yeah, you're totally correct. The um and uh with uh with going that extra small into the sixteen millimeters and uh fifteen millimeters. Mm you can't go down that far either. The caps can't be as tall. They start to run into things on the switch. Um, okay. And so you uh, um, you can, it, it causes problems, but there there is a growing community of uh, what are called low profile keyboards. Mm-hmm. And that is smaller and the caps are thinner and they're, um, they're smaller and you're right. The angle isn't nearly as severe. It, uh, it stays much more straight up and down. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it's, it's been a great little growing community of uh, low pro enthusiasts. Hmm. That's so cool. So yeah, mm-hmm. he actually touched on something that I had wondered too, because I, I'm not, this is I'm the stupidest brag ever, but you know, I do happen <laughs> to have monkey paws. So like, <laughs> how is that? for for typing on these keyboards because i looked at that and i was like oh no that's not gonna that won't work but uh, apparently it it works good i think uh you know my diagnosis for that would be you wouldn't like a 4 by 12 ortho you'd like a split keyboard okay that's my diagnosis of that okay of of my monkey paw i think yeah i think that on this on the split keyboard with the thumb cluster Uh uh-huh I think you just have your hands more spread out. I really, really do. And okay. I think that it would be better with bigger hands. Um, I think ortho would be really, really cramped. And I've heard a lot of people complain about that, actually, because your hands are a little bit closer together. Okay. Yep. Compared to a normal keyboard, that is. Yep. Yeah. I'm, what's, what's the one? It's, 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 yeah, it's I know. There was like... I forget what the laptop was, but it was one of the the smaller, like, yeah, tiny, super portable 
laptops. Uh, might have been a netbook. I remember that I hated it because I would constantly just hit the wrong keys because my, mm. my hands are too big for that keyboard. So. What was the one that we were talking about earlier today? Um, the one with the concave... Um... Oh, the ones that are like the little bowls. I forget what they call them, but... The Kinesis? Or the yeah. Advantage? I think it was the Kinesis. Kinesis sounds right. Was it right. split or was it in one piece? It was split, so... Split is probably yeah. a dactyl, which is we're kind of cool. We're just talking to split. Or, or, well, it was one board, but there was two bo- two bowls essentially. So okay, understood. Oh, understood. Okay. Yeah, yeah I believe that's the kinesis advantage that you guys are talking about. It's a very cool board, retro too. Um, mm-hmm. They've been making those for a while. It is. Yeah, yeah I, the kinesis. I ran across one of those at one of my uh, uh, old jobs where we were going across the entire company and like changing the arc settings on on every single computer yep and like jumping i'm used to your standard qwerty keyboard and you mm-hmm. know i set my password and then don't even think of like what the password is it's just this pattern that i type yep. if you change yep. the physical keyboard layout then that pattern is not the same anymore <laughs> and so it took me like at least 10 times longer to actually log mm-hmm. in on this one machine when I hit this keyboard because it was just so weird. I couldn't make my mind work with it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah there's it's always a big a, adjustment. There's a big adjustment, and that is another form of just like we were talking about with the ortho board of bringing the keys closer. Mm-hmm. They are closer, but I don't know, even, even me, who you know really, really is in this as a hobby as well as a business. I don't have any desire to try that right now because <laughs> I don't want to go through the adjustment period, you know? Yeah. Sometimes you want to do it and you're in the mood. Sometimes you're not. So kind of like he was saying for him, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't what Crux was saying. It wasn't worth it. And it's like, Hey, it takes me 10 times longer and that's okay. And that's how it is for some people, but Cole, that's his dream board. He wants to be <laughs> on that all day. Really? Yep. Yep. I love these cupped boards uh, like that. <laughs> they're they're so comfortable once you get used to them yeah it's it's incredible how little you move your fingers because okay. like that p key not uh-huh. only is it brought down closer to your palm but it's also curved up so you just move your pinky a tiny bit and you press your p yep. the same with until your, he was full top row until he was testing our uh, products he uh-huh. used a board it, it's it, essentially the exact same as this hmm. um for yep a minimum of six months and i just heard about it all day every day how great it was and it was <laughs> life-changing the best keyboard so he was into it uh-huh. and he every day he wants to go back yeah they're so good we have to go it's back to the island experience yep <laughs> we have to go back kate i have to have my concave keyboard mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh someone in the chat uh who is uh, oh go ahead uh so uh fat red said did we already talk about pros and cons of different controllers we hadn't um can you go into that like why would you choose one yeah Yeah, different microcontrollers Mm -hmm. um so in in the keyboard space we tend to gravitate around two microcontrollers in particular um getting more technical it's the 80 mega 34 u4s and um hmm, i can't remember the model number of this arm chip uh but uh there's uh one one is that like the teensy is based on i think i forget the model number off the top of my head yeah the teensy is based on that 18 mega 34 u4 um and same with the we sell two microcontrollers in our shop as well and the big uh selling point on that microcontroller is just that uh, it emulates a a HID device. Mm -hmm. So there's no extra work. You don't have to write special code to trick the computer into thinking that this is a HID device. Um, It's it's supported from the ground up on that controller. And yet it's still powerful enough to let... you use it in the same way that you would use an Arduino Uno or something. And uh, you can display things on screens or flash LEDs or uh, do any number of complex processing in your code. Mm -hmm. Um, You got quite a bit of power there. Um, 
but that is why there had been a little bit of move on to ARM is because you get even more power uh, right. on ARM chips and you can do more on the hardware, uh, which has been mildly limiting in the keyboard community. Uh, you start to run out of space for your code and whatnot. But overall, that's what that's what most of the keywords are on is uh, that 18 mega chip. And they're, re they're very great. The reason we sell two different ones ourselves is mm -hmm. uh, simply reliability and uh, USB-C. It's the way of the future. Um, and so that's why we and the whole keyword community kind of have uh, made our own and, and graduated past Arduino's offering. Yeah, so I wanted to ask you about that because I I knew it was either Arduino like an Arduino Teensy, but I was like, oh, that's not a Teensy. Or no, I'm sorry, it was either Arduino like uh like the equivalent of like a feather or something like that. I was like, no, it's not a feather. Mm -hmm. It looked more Teensy-ish. So that's why I wanted to to ask you about. It. Is it uh so is that your own design or is that from a you know third party or? Um. So. The Teensy was a, a very popular one, and it definitely sparked a lot of the custom keyboard scene right. because it was one of the first microcontrollers to give us access to this chip mm -hmm. all broken out. Um, but the really popular one is actually made by SparkFun. Um, hmm. It's their design originally. It's called a Pro Micro. Okay. Um, and uh, then the keyboard community, uh, one of the members actually created their own. And it's just, uh, it's very simple. It's a, a Pro Micro, same 80 mega chip, um, but we get USB-C on it. Right. So then keyboards can have USB-C. Uh, and so that's a, a very cool feature of uh, that controller. And it's not our design. It's just a, a community member designed it and supplies cool. them. Oh, yep. okay. And it was, it's fully backwards compatible with the Pro Micro. And you, I think that it kind of is so, sort of like what we were saying about earlier countries and how a lot of these pieces are sourced from different countries. Mm -hmm. That kind of lends itself to interchangeability. So you want these boards to use things that people might have at home. And that's kind of what we were doing where we made it easy and put it all in one place and made it very, very configurable. It's possible that people already have socketed elite C's. So we want to offer them a board that they can just put those into and use them. Mm. Um, that's pretty much any popular keyboard is compatible with the, I shouldn't say any popular keyboard, but the vast majority of them are compatible with the Pro Micro unless you mm. do PCB assembly where it's all soldered onto the board. Then right. it's a different story, of course. Yeah, someone in the in the um, chat earlier wanted to talk about uh, uh, the PC board design process, but it does it, it sounds to me uh, that was Martin Martin can't dance, uh, but I, it sounds to me like it was uh, you were saying there was someone else in the community that came up with the design, and that's kind of what everybody. Oh, somebody else. It it depends on what we're talking about for just the microcontrollers. Just the yes. microcontroller, right? Yeah, just the microcontrollers. Yeah. The keyboards, that's different. Um, or whether the controller goes on the keyboard, that's a different story. That's what we do. But these backwards compatible chips that all of these different boards use, interesting. Um, those are not our design. No, that's that's really cool that you that you do that though, because so mm -hmm. it it sounds to me like you do have the uh, the source. <laughs> Forge says, don't tell Martin what he can and can't do. You you got it. Sorry, Martin. Dance if you want to. It's all it's up to you, buddy. <laughs> so uh let's see. I wanted to say <laughs> howdy howdy to Tom. Uh I wanted to ask you guys if you uh put out <laughs> nice if you put out the source code to the keyboard so that someone can, you know, reprogram it or or you know, uh if they want to have the enter key be shift or or whatever. Do you do that or yep. yeah, so Cole will write the the software for the board, basically. Mm -hmm. And again, this goes back to interchangeability and everyone trying to use the same tools as much as possible. Mm -hmm. We then submit that to a popular open source piece of software called QMK, mm -hmm. which is reviewed and pulled in. And then our boards are listed in that configurator and toolbox to flash the key map. I understand this sounds complicated, but hmm. it's really, really actually, honestly, to you guys, it probably doesn't, no. but this yeah. can be an overwhelming part to some people. Mm -hmm. um, you would essentially choose the name of the board 
design your key map in a drag and drop GUI or write the code if that's your preference. Yeah. And then you flash it onto the controller. Oh, but someone can just write the sketch and just upload it to the, to the, uh, it's not a teensy. It's a thing that I forgot. Micro uh, pro micro pro micro. It's that yeah. guy. Okay. So, so cool. basically talk about, you know, uh, what he's asking about. Someone could just kind of submit it. Um, um, yeah. So there, like when was saying, there's a, there's a big open source, uh, project mm -hmm. called uh, QMK. And so that gives, that's kind of like a framework. Uh, uh, and so we, the keyboard community doesn't tend to use the Arduino IDE, mm -hmm. but um, of course you're, anybody is totally welcome to. That's where we put our work in is mm -hmm. to support this open source uh, project. But uh, if uh, you were so inclined, you could, you could say, no, I don't want to use that library. I want to roll my own. I'm gonna what? I'm gonna program the uh, logic myself, and I'm gonna flash it right on using the Arduino IDE or uh, what's the one that the Teensy uses? Uh, I can't remember. It's been a while since I flashed a Teensy. I know what you're talking they about. Have, you I know, know they have a plugin yeah, that, that just plugs box. into the Arduino IDE, but yeah, for the I mean, there, for there's the, a multiple ways of actually getting firmware on there and writing the code so and for audio stuff especially there's a whole nother different tool uh, pjrc or something like that can't remember off the top of my head but they have this whole big configurator you know gui type of thing so it sounds to me like like qmk is essentially like a a community-based github sort of thing for different keyboards yeah. like, keyboard layouts yeah you're you're completely correct. It's uh, it's one big GitHub repository, yeah. and all of the keyboards that are currently supported by QMK are just in there. And it's just there's just a folder called keyboards, and you can just see, oh, there's you know 700 keyboards in here, and uh, you just have to write the code that goes in that folder that says, hey, when you put when you sh are effectively shorting these two wires together, mm -hmm. I want you to push uh this part in the matrix right and then down the line any customer can come by and say now that part in the matrix i actually want that to actuate the letter g mm -hmm. um and they can do that simply without having to know how to write in c yeah. um they can do it through guis or of course anybody can uh write uh their own code to program their keyboard as well yeah it's so very cool so do you do like a, a the matrix style or do you use like a, 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 a mux or a you know multiplexer or like how do you handle all those inputs because there's not that many inputs on yeah so uh, almost all keyboards use uh, matrix uh, and scan through the rows and columns right. to wait for a short uh, effectively and then we can position where that short is on the uh, keyboard and trigger key press um and so it, we may have uh 78 keys on there but we only have uh, nine rows and nine columns and so it works out <laughs> yeah oh, we really only cool. actually need 18 pins <laughs> yeah and and how many is on that board was it is it 18 or um on yeah on the pro micro there's 18 uh pins that you can uh communicate with oh you know what that reminds me i gotta pull this sucker up right now now you guys also have a, 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 oh, you know what? I should catch up on chat here. Everybody's everybody's talking here in chat. Uh, let's see. Uh, Thomas oh, Tusano I should says, pull it up too. Says, uh, what's up? Uh, hello uh, to the fine people at uh, at I3. We, we gave a shout out to that earlier. Oh, and everything else is our bot. Okay, that's fine. So okay. um, I wanted to uh, ask you guys. Now, you guys have this project section on the site. This might be the last thing that we're able to do in the main show, but we're, we we got we definitely got more to talk about in the post game for sure. But this one caught my eye especially. That the pro now mm -hmm. now can you explain about the projects area in general before we get to the modulus? Okay, sure. So how I said long or uh, earlier. Mm -hmm. In the stream, I said a long time ago when we first started thinking about board source, it started as uh, an artisan manufacturing company, which mm -hmm. we can get into in the after show maybe. Okay. But quickly that morphed into, no, let's make a group buy an IC platform. Mm -hmm. Then that led to, okay, let's make a store too. So the group buy an IC platform is slash projects. 
And while right now you only see our projects, mm -hmm. if you make an account, you can post your own projects. Oh. Now, the significance of that is that right now, uh, I also said earlier how I don't even know some of the keyboards coming from South Korea. I don't have the pleasure of seeing every single one of them because mm -hmm. I don't know where they're all posted. Yeah, That also happens in America. Hmm. Just in America also, even if you don't care about what's going on around you. There could be things posted on Geek Hack mm -hmm. that we never hear of if you're looking on Reddit or vice versa. Or it just so happened that this only happened in this one 5,000 person Discord. <laughs> and dang it, I missed it. It's not available anymore. Right. So our goal was just to create a central store of this. Similar to how you said QMK is like a GitHub of the key maps. Mm -hmm. This was going to kind of just be a storage, a storage place for all of the ongoing group buys and ICs that people could look at. Um, right now, it's just our stuff, but anyone could post their own um, it's like a project there. Universe, but for mechanical keyboards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they post updates to their project, which are emailed out to whoever follows it. Mm -hmm. You know, they convert it from an IC to a group buy. And the IC functionality of it is IC stands for interest check. And usually how that will be is it's it's not always for a store, mm -hmm. but if an individual is trying to organize something themselves, they will ask things like, do you guys want polycarbonate or do you want silver anodized aluminum? <laughs> do you want SA profiler? Do you want DSA? Do you want got yellows? You want got reds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Trying to make sure their project is as successful as it can be. They often use Google forms for that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with Google forms. I actually love it. Mm -hmm. But that's what we built in for the IC functionality. So you would build your form, um, radio buttons, drop downs, et cetera, et cetera, to survey or poll in your IC. And then it would also aggregate all of the entries um, for your project and display them publicly if you wish. So we were just hoping that people could go out, post this in their discords, on their Reddit accounts, on their Twitter, on their Instagram, whatever. But I just thought it would be very, very helpful to have this one place to look at if you wanted to see what was going on so you didn't miss it. Because hmm. that's something you definitely see happening here. They're like, dang, I wish I was in on that. I didn't even know it was running. Yeah. Or when did that happen? You know, because so many of these things are only available for 30 days at a time. And then you might have to wait until next year to get it again. And for the for the uninitiated, I see that's an, in, that's an interest check. So basically you're saying, here's what we're working on. We might release this. Is this something that you would pay money for? Do I understand? Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Totally. Got it. Yep. Um, yeah. And then uh, group the way the group buys uh, GBs, mm -hmm. uh, they are, uh, it's another thing that it happens. You see it in other communities. You see it in the Raspberry Pi community and um, several other communities, but it's pretty much just uh, it starts by a whole bunch of people getting together and saying, hey, we all want this. If we all agree to buy it, then we can all get a little bit lower price on it. And mm. it, it's that simple. And so we just wanted to provide a good place where you could do it all at the same time, uh, make your interest check and Okay, it looks like you got a hundred people who uh, expressed interest in this. Yeah. Um, now you click one button, you convert it to a group buy, and then you can uh, start sending out PayPal invoices after uh, people sign up to your group buy. And it's uh, it's that simple, and uh, that's what we we were providing. Uh, yep. Very cool. And uh, you can see our our project here, the Modulus Forty, is uh, in interest check phase. Uh, we're gauging interest on it and seeing uh, uh, how people uh, like it and react to it. As he clicks the Jumbotron, my heart is racing. Oh. I'm like, work, <laughs> work, keep cycle oh. properly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, uh, live demos, you gotta love them, huh? Um, no, 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 I think it, I think it worked, but I know we had a problem for a while. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> but the Modulus 40 is what we is what we launched with for our our interest check, and it was a project mm -hmm. we were very, very excited about. And I'm... we're still working on it, mm -hmm. and we're still coming out with more group buys. Um, and I am very excited about the Modulus for a lot of reasons, and I know you wanted to talk about it a little bit. So I, I if do... you have any questions about it, let us hear it, or I can give you a, uh, I absolutely... a brief explanation. I absolutely general. do, but we're already over time. So uh, Oh, okay. Yeah. 
But I, I'm no, we're definitely coming back to this though in the post game. Absolutely. Um, okay. You you are able to keep sticking around with us for a little bit more. Sure. Fantastic. Okay. Well, then in that case, we're going to get rid of that right there. And uh, just a quick recap here. We're talking with the guys from BoardSource.xyz. That's uh, that's the site that you've uh, seen up on the uh, on the screen there earlier. And uh, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's not right now. So this video is about to end. Uh, but if you're watching on Twitch, keep watching on Twitch because uh, we're going to take a quick break here. And uh, we're going to turn around, grab something new to drink, come back and uh keep going with the show and we're going to talk about the modulus and we're going to find out why in the heck there's a slider on that keyboard so because <laughs> i am freaking fascinated i'm i i that's that's a really cool thing anyway uh real quick before we go fat red says what mass drop used to be yeah no that's that's pretty much exactly what it is uh yep. and al although like a very cool like much smaller version of it that's awesome uh forge says that that font is pretty sweet I don't know which font, but but one of them is pretty sweet. Uh, we'll we'll I'm sure talk more about that in the post game as well. At any rate, we're gonna close this thing down here, take a quick break, and come right back. Uh, so everybody, stick around. We'll see you shortly. All right. Yeah. Hi, I'm the Mighty Pong, host of the show that you just got done watching. Hey, if you'd like to see the entire show and not just the first hour, make sure that you watch on twitch.tv forward slash sinshop every Friday night for the main show. And on Monday nights, we have our special project night. So you can join us, build something, and uh, basically throw stuff at us while we try to concentrate on things. It's a lot of fun. Kind of. But hey, anyway, we hope to see you there. It's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, so join us over there, twitch.tv forward slash sin shop. I am, of course, the Mighty Pong, and we will see you there. One take. Not one.